Hello and welcome to BI Basics 105, the introduction to the Business Intelligence Development Studio, or BIDS for short. For those of you who are new to the world of BI with the Microsoft products, there are two main programs you'll work with when developing BI solutions, and one of those is SQL Server Management Studio, but by far the one you'll work in most often is the Business Intelligence Development Studio. So, this video is going to just give a quick introduction to what the BI Development Studio is all about. Now what is BI Development Studio or BIDS? Uh, it's a program that ships with SQL Server 2005 or 2008. So if you have a license for SQL 2005 or 2008 then you can install the Business Intelligence Development Studio on people that have licenses for it. Uh, you'll notice that it's sometimes called just BIDS or BI Dev Studio for short. Uh, this is the development environment for working with all three of the main server pieces of the uh, Microsoft BI stack. Uh, SQL Server Integration Services, or SSIS, SQL Server Analysis Services, or SSAS, and SQL Server Reporting Services, SSRS. Now, BIDS is actually just Visual Studio, so if you're currently working with uh, C Sharp or VB, uh, or, or J Sharp or C++ uh, and managed code, then you're already working with Visual Studio. So why in the world would they make Visual Studio the interface for doing BI projects? Well, there are actually a lot of benefits to this. One is, of course, you have a single environment to do your main pieces of building a data warehouse, and that is your ETL, your integration services packages for moving the data, transforming it, loading it then into the star schema. You also then use analysis services uh, to build your cubes, but you do that again within the same environment. So the cube building pieces are there as well. And finally, of course, you can design all the reports inside of bids. So you have a single environment where you can design all of these pieces. And more importantly, you can even have a single solution that contains projects of multiple types, meaning that a, you can open a single solution and it might contain your integration services project and your analysis services and your reporting services projects all open in the, in the same project. And I'll show you that uh, in just a moment. So by having it in this one environment, uh, it makes it easier to maintain. You can just open one thing basically and have all of your pieces. You also sometimes extend a BI solution by adding things like uh, .NET assemblies, uh, DLLs, and so forth. And, and uh, later in a video when I talk about custom security, that's one of the things that you do often with custom security is you build a custom DLL and then call that from the cube. So having all of this in one environment it means that the, that the pro developers only have to learn one tool. And it also gives you all the benefits of being in a development tool. And one of the big ones is source code control. You can actually check in and check out your files for building cubes and so forth. And that's always been one of the problems in the past is someone makes a change to the cube, how do you roll back from that? How do you track what changes were made and when and who did them? Well, you, you can put all of this under source code control, which is actually very powerful. Now, as powerful as having everything in BI Dev Studio is, um, it's not everything that you'll use in a BI solution. It's really just the data warehousing piece of it. What that means is there are some things that BIDS doesn't do. For example, the performance point, uh, the design of the, both the planning and the analytics uh, and monitoring pieces, those are not in BI Dev Studio. Um, the monitoring and analytics piece has their own tool called the Dashboard Designer. And the planning piece, it, it uses some other tools as well, uh, Excel being one of them. ProClarity is currently a standalone tool, at least the, the desktop piece is, and then you publish up to a server piece. That will eventually become integrated into Performance Point, but for now it's, it's standalone. And of course SharePoint, it has its own uh, development environment. I mean, some of that, if you're doing custom things, you can do it in uh, Visual Studio, but it also has just its own design element uh, just using web pages. So having seen this, uh, BI Dev Studio doesn't do everything for you, but it does uh, the bulk of the work. So what I want to do is just introduce BI Dev Studio and go through for people who are new to it, who haven't used it before, just what is the interface like, uh, how does it work, and uh, I'll just point out some of the major pieces to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to all programs, and again, 
BI Dev Studio is just Visual Studio, so I could actually go to Visual Studio and launch that. You see Microsoft Visual Studio 2005, but also under SQL Server, you see SQL Server Business Intelligence Development Studio. Same product, uh, it just so happens that I already had Visual Studio installed, so it just added some project types to this. Within the environment, if I go up to the File, New, Project, you'll notice that the first pro list of project types here is Business Intelligence Projects. And then there are a number of templates installed, Analysis Services, Integration Services, Reporting Services, and so forth. So those are the pieces that you get. If all you have is Business Intelligence Development Studio, you'll only have this list of projects and then there are a couple of others, but you won't have Visual Basic and Visual C Sharp, for example. But in this case, uh, I'm going to open a project that I've already created just to show uh, what this looks like. And this is actually, I'm going to open a solution and actually this is a, a single project, so let me open the, uh, the actual solution here. And a solution is just one or more projects, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But first of all, notice that I have a main work area here. It starts with the start page. You can change that. Uh, that's just the default behavior. And it lists your recent projects and, and some other information as well. Now, I'll come back to the main work area in a moment, but I'm going to kind of go around the uh, UI in a uh, clockwise fashion. I'm going to start with the Solution Explorer. You notice that the first thing listed up here is a solution called ADV Works Demo, and it contains two projects. So a solution is one or more projects. This one happens to currently contain an analysis services project and an integration services project. Now, the reason I know that, other than the fact that I set this up, is by the folders in these projects. A, an analysis services project has a cubes folder and a dimensions folder and so forth. Integration services project, of course, has some different ones, the main one being the uh, integration services packages folder. If I had a reporting services project uh, in the same solution, I could uh, see that as well, and it has a reports folder, among other things. These folders are simply logical structures for dividing the files up in the UI. It's a way to see them. By default, a solution represents a folder out on the hard drive, and then the project typically is in a subfolder uh, under that, or sometimes it's just in that base solution folder. By default, anytime you create a new project, it creates a new solution folder for it. Um, in this case, I simply created a new project and added it to the existing folder. I can do that uh, by simply coming up and saying File, New Project, and I'll just quickly add a reporting services project to this, and I will keep it in the same solution. I'll choose Add to Solution here, and I'll simply call this ADV Works Reports Demo. And you'll notice that once it goes through the creation process, it has added the reporting services project to the same solution. Now, below this, I have the properties window. And this just shows me the property of whatever object I happen to have selected at, the sa at that time. And notice that right now it's just showing me the, the path name for these. If I choose, for example, a, a data source, uh, it shows me a different list of properties and so forth. So as the object changes, the list of properties changes. Now, one thing to notice is that on all these windows, these are just kind of the default position uh, for them. It's very easy. I can resize this. I can collapse a window. Notice this little thumbtack. This is the auto hide. And notice it drops now to the uh, right hand side. And if I hover over it, it pops it back open. As soon as I move off, it will slide back. I could collapse both of these windows. Uh, and now I have Projects and Solution Explorer. And that gives me more room in my work area. I'm going to go ahead and pin these back for a moment. Notice that they go back to this standard look where one is above the other, but I can take, for example, the properties window and detach it. I can make it free floating so it's out in space by itself, or I can dock it in various places. Notice the little tips that I get to help me. So, for example, if I bring it up 
and put it over this little tip, it's going to dock it to the right side of this current window. I put it down here, it's going to dock it to the bottom. If I bring it back over here, I get the same set of tips. This will put it back where it was, docking it along the bottom. I could also dock it up above, or I could make it a tab. For example, if I make it tabs, now I have both of these windows overlapping, and I simply have tabs. If I want the Solution Explorer tab first, I'll just click and drag it over and uh, reposition those. So it's easy sometimes to accidentally grab a window and detach it and go, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Just use these guides to dock them back where you want. And if you get the windows completely messed up, or what a lot of people do is they'll close a window, there's an easy way out that I'll show you in just a moment. But first, let's say that you did accidentally close the properties window. You can easily come up to the view menu and find whatever windows uh, or whatever window you wanted. So uh, in this case, I closed the properties window. So I'll simply come and find it here and click, and it reopens it back where it was the last time. If you don't see the window that you're interested in, there is an, an other windows option, and occasionally you'll need some of these additional windows as well. If you totally mess up the environment and you don't like the way it looks, then you can always come up to the view menu. I'm sorry, you can go to the window, and there is a reset window layout. Clicking that will take you back to the default for this particular environment. Notice it moves my properties back to the, uh, the bottom of the right-hand side. Now, down along the continuing clockwise down along here, in this case I have a pending check-ins. That's because I have source safe and uh, visual source safe enabled source code control for this. You don't always have that. I'm going to close that for now. Sometimes you'll have an error list down here. Sometimes you will have um, dif different windows, one that uh, shows you the, the action, the commands that are running, uh, the, the values of variables, your watch list, your locals, and so forth. In addition, and I'm going to go ahead and close that as well, on the left-hand side, continuing clockwise, there is a toolbox. This is here most of the time. There sometimes uh, is a, a server explorer window over here to, to look at things on different servers. But the toolbox is generally where you have your, the tools, the items that you drag and drop onto whatever you're working with in the main work area. And then, of course, finally, I do have the main work area here. So I have just a couple of files already created. I'm going to start. Uh, there's nothing in them, but I'm going to open a package. And you'll notice, for example, this is an integration services package. And it opens in the main work area. Now if I open up the toolbox, I have a number of items here. This is context sensitive and changes. It was blank earlier. And so these are things that I could drag and drop and put onto this package. If I go to data flow, uh, it will, the toolbox will change to add data flow sources and transformations. So it is context sensitive. Uh, and if you want, of course, you can pin it open. Just use the little thumbtack. And that, that keeps it open now. And um, as I change, you'll notice it updating uh, as well. So very useful. Uh, UI here, very powerful. There are just a lot of things that can become cluttered, and you'll notice that my work area is now fairly small in relation to all my other windows. And that's why a lot of times people like these uh, collapsible windows. And it gives them a lot more working space. And this is really important uh, when you're build, building forms and, and doing graphical layout. So it can be uh, very important for that. So this is the Business Intelligence Development Studio, and uh, obviously there's a lot more to it, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of how this works. One of the big things that you'll see coming up is that these different folders are what will contain a variety of files. Now on disk, they're all in the same directory. Again, this is just a logical separation, and it does it by the extension on those particular files. But this is the uh, the BI Dev Studio bids, Business Intelligence Development Studio, whatever you want to call it, and it's a single environment for building, in this case, integration services, uh, analysis services, and reporting services projects. So in summary, by having this single environment for my three main types of data warehousing projects, I only have one product to learn, which is great. I can open multiple projects just by opening a single solution file. I can also open those projects individually. They're still individual projects. 
It's just a solution file just says open all these projects at once. Uh, and that can make it easier. You can treat your entire data warehouse solution as a, uh, a single entity rather than having these projects scattered out all over the place. And of course I can do check in and check out. That's with my integration services packages, my cubes uh, and dimensions and so forth and analysis services and my reports as well. So having a good understanding of how to work with bids uh, and manipulate it and move around in it is really important for uh, BI solutions. So with that we'll jump into actually using BI Dev Studio to build analysis services, integration services, and reporting services solutions.